because we now have a small glimpse of what's in here and there's some very nice fish to target. Oh, it's a big one. Oh. It's the biggest fish I've seen oh. in the whole strip. Oh, oh my God. My life recently has consisted of a lot of editing of our videos, which is basically just sitting in my office, looking at my computer screen, clicking buttons, and obviously I need some time away from that. So in the evenings or on my lunch break, I choose to go for a walk or ride my bike down the river. I first discovered the fishing that was available on this river late on last summer. I went for a walk with a friend on a really hot day and we stumbled across some carp. And at that moment, I decided I needed to give it a go. After a bit of pre-baiting and a few nights down here, I managed to get into some really nice fish. I did some more fishing throughout the autumn and winter, but on the cart front, it was completely unsuccessful. I did try for pike and had some nice ones on lures, but yeah, the carp just seemed to switch off and I just couldn't find them. A river like this during the winter is pretty hectic. Every other week it's bursting its banks and most of the time it's completely unfishable. It was one February day, I was pretty, feeling pretty ill. I was indoors and I thought I need to get out of the house and go for a walk. Came down the river as usual and somehow stumbled across some feeding fish. It was on another arm of this river and with it being tidal, the tide was right at the top. I lowered a rig in between where the fish were feeding and somehow five minutes later, I was hooked into an incredible river carp. Not bad for a bite in February, Alex. Nah. I chose to fish two different sections of river last year, a stretch which was tidal and a stretch which was non-tidal. I caught good fish from both, but I definitely saw some bigger ones living in the tidal stretch, and that's where I wanted to head next. Cole didn't actually get a membership for the river last year. He just came along on the sessions to do some filming and take some photos. But after seeing what I managed to catch, he was desperate to get himself a ticket and uh, join me. After deciding that we both wanted to try and catch some carp from the river, in the closed season, it was late May, Carl and I decided to go for a walk and try and find some spots to start pre-baiting. This morning we've been walking the river, trying to locate areas to pre-bait, ready for our session on June 16th. I've been using a two ounce lead and some braid to try and locate these deeper areas, just casting it in, counting how long it takes to hit the bottom and also dragging it back across the bottom, trying to locate any hidden snags that we wouldn't otherwise notice. This tidal area is absolutely savage. There's so many snags, so much weed, lily pads, overhanging branches and also branches beneath the surface that it's key. Before we start baiting, we actually locate what's going on beneath the surface. On that particular day, it was quite warm, the water was reasonably clear, and we managed to spot some carp. Most of the fish we saw that day were just above and below a small weir. There's also a bridge which goes over the river, which means you can get a really good bird's eye view. Most of the fish we saw that day were commons between five and 10 pounds. There were a few a little bit bigger, uh, but after a couple of hours of staring deep into that water, we spotted something a lot bigger than the rest, a really nice mirror.
Uh, it was a pretty exciting first look at the river this season. Uh, we even spotted a couple of carp. We found some very nice spots that we're going to bait up. And we've got two weeks until June the 16th. And we're going to be baiting up every single day. And uh, yeah, like I say, after seeing those fish, we got us super excited because we now have a small glimpse of what's in here. And there's some very nice fish to target. River carp move around a lot. This particular stretch is miles and miles long. And that's why pre-baiting was going to be essential. We needed to get them on one specific area so that we knew we'd have a good chance on the opening day of the season. About a week ago, Carl and I came down to the river with just a leading rod and located a few areas that looked likely, a few areas that we wanted to target. And in particular, we found three different spots and that's because there's gonna be three of us fishing, me, Carl and our friend Ryan. We're all gonna be down here June the 16th. But this is our first time baiting up. I'm gonna do this one and then the two spots upstream and then head home. I've got the bait in the rucksack. Let's give these fish some munch. We decided we wanted to get down every single day to pre-bait. There were a couple days we were busy with other stuff and didn't manage to get down, but we felt like it was important that there was always some bait there for the fish to feed on. We had decided to get our friend Ryan involved with the campaign. Him and Carl headed down to pre-bait together on a few occasions. Thank you, Ryan. And this one, Alex, Alex saw, saw a fish on when we were here last time, but we saw the biggest fish down by the bridge. We've been baiting up the river pretty much for the last week now. Every single day we've been topping up the spots. And the way we've been doing it cost effectively has been with particle. Uh, we went online to a bulk supplier, bought a ton of dry particle and we're boiling it up ourselves so you get so much bait for your money. I'm just getting another lot sorted now. I'm putting the hemp into the bucket. I'll soak it overnight, covered in water, and then tomorrow I'll boil it for about an hour. Could have just left it out in the rain for the day. <laughs> because this river is tidal, twice a day the river turns back on itself and flows pretty fast. It brings a lot of weed and other debris along with it. Because of that, we decided we wanted to bait up spots very close into our near margin. We didn't want to be fishing to the far bank with lines stretching across as that would mean getting tangled and wiped out by weed in the middle of the night. So we baited three spots right in the edge where we could lower them in and be sure that we wouldn't get wiped out by weed at all. On the lead up to June the 16th, the weather was really hot. We were really hoping that fish would get spawning out of the way and all done before we actually fished on the opening day. And yeah, we were pretty lucky with that. Uh, about a week before they spawned, we saw plenty of fish spawning in and about the weeds. Watching the water carefully, we hoped to spot the big mirror we'd seen previously. Then all of a sudden, not far from our chosen area, there it was. Oh my God, there's an amazing carp. Big scaly. Actually, you see the one with massive plated scales on its side? Yeah. There's one with like huge with boosted confidence that spawning was going to be out the way and the big mirror being in the vicinity, we continued with our baiting. A couple of days before our session, we had a load of rain. The rivers were right at the top, almost bursting their banks, and we were getting a little bit worried that it may be unfishable. We kind of wanted to try and bait up as quietly as we could. We'd often come early in the morning or late on in the evening. And we were always wary of trying to not flatten the grass around the patches where we were baiting, just to try and make sure no one knew where we were putting in the bait. We're about to drive down the river and find out that there's someone else in our spot. That would be a little bit annoying, but we're there plenty of time and I'm so excited! See you down there, Alex. Yeah. We're taking both vehicles. Alex has got to head off um, a couple of times, maybe to go for meetings and stuff. And uh, I'm taking the van because it's got all the fishing stuff in it. This van I actually borrowed um, from a friend of mine because we left our jobs and no longer had 
an income so I needed to borrow a vehicle and someone helped out immensely um, by lending me a van. Alex has got our little car which is decent actually, it's working quite well. Anyway, oh yeah I forgot, sometimes the doors just don't unlock. Okay then, no, we're good. Got some bait, got some mixers in case the sun comes out, which I highly doubt. Net and Matt going in. All sorted now, and uh, we're pretty much ready to get down the river. Alex has gone ahead of me. Now I'm really starting to get nervous. I'm just hoping we're the only ones in the car park. I don't think there's anyone down here. <clears throat> Are we in luck? There's no one else here yet. As we drove down to the river on June the 15th, we were surprised to see no other cars in the car park. We let out a sigh of relief and we quickly rushed to the spot and uh, got our gear into the swim. And yet more rain. This rain just doesn't stop. Deary me. The changeable weather continued, our kit getting drenched before beginning to dry out again a few hours later. Thankfully we've managed to get the spots that we've been baiting for the last two weeks. We were pretty nervous to be honest that we'd come down and there'd be someone else already here. But we've got the spots and now we've just got to wait. Ryan's going to be down in a bit and I'm just going to catch up on some editing to try and pass the time because I know it's going to feel like a long, long wait until midnight. The river was looking pretty much perfect. It had been really high a few days before but it already started falling and there was still quite a bit of colour in the water but it was on its way down and looking absolutely perfect. We haven't been able to fish for a month so we've been doing everything we can to stack the odds in our favour and right now we're just cutting the grasses back preparing swims so we can land fish safely and um, yeah getting ready and also getting kind of getting butterflies actually I don't know about you guys but like We've seen bubbles coming up. Haven't seen any actual carp, but I'm pretty certain there'll be some in the area. It was a really chilled out day. Our parents came along and we had a nice picnic. Oi. And then in the evening, Brian joined us, had a lovely barbecue, and we just had plenty of time to get our rigs ready, prepare all our tackle, so everything was perfect, ready to drop the rigs in at midnight. Hi, Ryan. Hello, how you doing? Good, how about you? Enjoyed your video earlier. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. Ryan still watches our videos when they launch at 12 o'clock on yeah, Saturday. Yeah, 12 o'clock, have to be there. <laughs> That's yeah. why you were late, because you were watching one of our videos. No, I was uh, doing, doing some paperwork, but... Nice. 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 You excited? I'm buzzing almost at the, uh, the, the rude word again. <laughs> Getting the food ready. Maple barbecue from Harrods. <laughs> no, from Tesco's. I've been watching bubbles come up on the pre baited spots constantly ever since we got here and they're definitely on the pre-bait on that particle we've been putting in over the last two weeks. However, tonight, because there are so many bream in here, I've decided to go with big hook baits, quite a large hook, because I really hope, and I don't want to get woken up by a bream and that to ruin my chances for when the carp come along. I've got a 20 mil bottom bait with a 50 mil pop-up, uh, a size six Y gape hook, and I'm just hoping that deters the bream up until the last couple of days we have been just putting out the particle it's really cheap and you can afford to put lots of it out and clear the spots off but over the last couple of days we have been adding some boilie to the mix 
and just because that's what we're going to be using as our actual hook bait we obviously want the carp to get used to picking up those boilies off the bottom because if I used a bit of corn no doubt I'd just be broken up with bream after bream anyway they're bubbling right now whether it's carp or bream I'm not too sure most likely bream but hoping at some point tonight the carp move in Very good, by the way, <laughs> Chef Ryan. <laughs> Chef Ryan has done a good job with my manky fork. <laughs> the sun is setting on the 15th of June, 2019, and I'm pretty hyped. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> oh. That was a carp. That was a carp. No, that was no, a carp. That was a carp. Oh, it come right certainly, out. the way it jumped. Yeah, That's right in front of my spot as well. I heard it. I reckon Ryan's gonna get. I one. might get one first actually. That's two jumps, <laughs> three jumps in the last like twenty minutes over my spot. And that was a carp. I heard it. It would do do like it was splash splash. Like it, well, it didn't sound massive, but yeah, it jumped. Four or five pound probably. Yeah, but it jumped right out. I mean, I'll, I'll be happy with any river carp. How long to go, Alex? Five minutes. This wait has been long. I've just been sat here, just listening out, and every now and then you hear a of either a bream or a carp jumping. He thinks I've got some green already. Yeah. June the 16th, uh, spinning for 30 seconds and I'm getting green bites. Not exactly ideal, but it means there's fish in the swim. And then hopefully we're gonna get absolutely rip roaring bite. And then there'll be six rods in 100 yards of river that we've been pre-baiting for, well, since the 28th of, June, uh, 28th of May, not June. So, we're very, very hopeful. We're all set. This is where the anticlimax starts. Not one of these bite alarmed beeps once until next week. <laughs> we'll see. Fingers crossed. All the rods are in, and I really don't know whether I'm gonna be able to get any sleep tonight. Firstly, because we're gonna probably get lots of liners from Bream. Secondly, because I'm just so excited. Only 15 minutes into the new season, I heard an alarm down the bank and it was Ryan. He was into one straight away. That's a carp, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you hear the bite? Yeah. Well, I didn't think it would happen that quick. After the excitement of Ryan's carp, we all headed back to bed. The atmospheric night soon making way for dawn. I'm not sure exactly what time it was, but early morning we were awoken to another bite. This time it was Carl's rod. Oh my god. Oh my god. These fish, um, they're wild and they're constantly swimming against the flow. So they're powerful. Oh, so glad to get that one in the net. Every single fish on here just fights like absolute crazy. Every time you hook into one of these river carp, you do think that they're gonna be a lot bigger than they are. They pull so, so hard. And this one, even with its um, withered away, melted little fins, put up an incredible scrap and had me convinced it was a lot bigger than it actually is, but still an absolute cracker to catch in the new season. So glad now, and we've had a couple of bites and uh, made all of that pre-baiting worthwhile. The 
fish which Carl and Ryan had seemed to be what I had in mind to be the average for the river. Most of the fish we'd seen had been sort of 10, 12 pound commons. So we weren't too surprised that is what we caught. After Carl's early morning bite, the fishing slowed up a lot. There was very little to be seen, not really any signs of carp anywhere, and we were sort of thinking it might be worth staying another night if we were going to want to have another chance of catching something. Well, this is nice. Rain's just set in, and yeah, I don't really know where, where the rain came from. Just to 15, 20 minutes ago, the sky was pretty clear, and now it's really gone moody and cloudy and the rain is absolutely hammering down but i'm just going to shelter under my umbrella wait for this rain to pass and uh just hope hope cross my fingers that one of these rods gets picked up by a carp at some point today i'm a pretty impatient person so after seeing carl and ryan both catch while i was sat there blanking I was starting to lose my patience a little, but as any carp angler knows, sometimes you have to just sit there and wait it out. After the tide had been in and back out again, I decided that it'd probably be a good idea to bring the rods in, clear all the weeds off the lines, and also have a rebait. I think when that tide is rushing in, it can wash all the bait that is there off the spot, and also it can move the rig a little. So, rebaited the rigs, rebaited the spots. It was mid-afternoon, at a time where I was probably least confident of a bite, when my rod just went into meltdown. Is it still stripping line? It's taken this long, but you've got a bite. Oh, it's going again. That's a big fish, Alex. He's a good fish. Pretty good, yeah. The fight from that carp was immense. Soon after hooking it, it pulled a load of line upstream, got stuck in all the weed, but I kept steady pressure. The line was actually going from the rod tip straight down into the weeds and then along the bottom to where the fish was some 30 yards upstream. And Carl was poking the net pole in and about that, trying to lift up the weeds so I could get in direct contact with the fish again. It was all a bit messy, but finally Carl managed to get it unpinned and I was in straight contact with the fish again. We've untangled ourselves from some weed. Is it going solid? No, still there. Right, so I'll, I'll get it. That's fine. That won't. That won't bother you now. Yeah, he's come up. He's just down there. Oh, you're knotted up. Oh, it's a big one. Oh. It's the biggest fish I've seen oh. in the whole strip. It's the big one, the big one that we saw. I was shaking. It was a fish that we'd seen and it was a fish that we were pretty sure was the biggest in there. Left, 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 left. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's, the big one. it's the big one. Oh, wow. That's the biggest fish that No we've wonder seen. it fought so hard, it went the whole way up there. Oh man, I was stressed when it got caught on the, this bit of weed. Yeah. Oh, that feels so good. That is a giant mouth. Well, this season's opening session on the river went to plan. Check out that. I really couldn't have asked for a better fish to catch. And with it being the one that we actually saw off the bridge in the close season, I couldn't have asked for any more. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh it my God. Beautiful. I couldn't quite believe I'd managed to catch the big mirror. After seeing it in the close season, that became our target fish. And somehow on the first day of the season, I managed to catch it. But there are plenty more stretches of the river to target and also some big pike to catch. So I'm definitely gonna be back down here soon. 